And hello everybody, this is Larry Shavaro from First Associates, and good afternoon to all of our friends in the East, and good morning to our friends on the West Coast. Uh, very excited to present our ninth webinar in uh, our successful alternative lending strategies. Um, today we are really excited to have Phil Bartow, for the Portfolio Manager from River North, join us to talk about a look ahead of marketplace lending for 2017. Uh, thanks to Rose Waldy, our marketing manager, for putting this together, and Phil, who has uh, graciously uh, volunteered to chat a little bit today. Um, you will find that uh, a couple housekeeping issues here. Uh, all of the webinars that we've done in the past are recorded and on our YouTube channel. And then at the end of the webinar, there'll be a quick survey if you can take a minute or so to complete that. That helps us uh, provide uh, content for upcoming webinars. Uh, all the webinars and all of our information is on uh, the First Associates website. All right, Rose, next slide please. A little bit about First Associates. We are the largest third-party servicer of marketplace loans in the United States. Uh, we are uh, working with most of the participants today in marketplace lending from Prosper, Lending Club, Funding Circle, Avant, Loan Depot, and probably a hundred other companies today, and all of the investors that purchase these loans. Uh, we value our uh, relationships with all of the platforms and the investors out there. Um, we were founded in 1986, and the new ownership group uh, we came in about seven years ago and have grown today from six people and a $30 million portfolio to over 240 people and close to $12 billion. And we will be up to about 400 people by the end of uh, 2017. Um, we're headquartered in San Diego. I'm looking out the window today, and it's cloudy, unfortunately. We had rain yesterday, but Sunday was 80 degrees. Sorry to my New York friends who are about 8 or 10 degrees today. Um, we provide uh, loan and lease servicing, backup servicing, custodial contract verifications for not only marketplace lending, but all consumer and commercial assets except for mortgage. Um, one bit of information um, as the webinar goes, and we'll talk about a quick agenda. Would you please, um, if you have questions, there is a button on the uh, left-hand side on the bottom that you can send in your questions. We will have a 10-minute a, a presentation followed by questions and answers uh, today. If we don't get to all the questions, we will uh, have Phil respond to them, and then we will email them out, and the webinar uh, slides will be emailed out afterwards as well. Next slide, please. Some upcoming events. Um, next week in Las Vegas, um, the iBig Marketplace and Cloud Lending Summit and Expo, um, an, excellent, an excellent event. Uh, I will be hosting uh, two sessions on uh, loan origination, servicing, and investors. Um, very excited to, to be doing that once again with the folks from, from iBig. Followed two weeks later, Context Alternative Lending Summit uh, in Miami, followed by SVIG, a uh, big investor conference in Vegas, typically uh, 6,000 attendees. And then the granddaddy of them all, Lend It. Um, 2017 back in New York this year, so we'll see all of our investment banking friends there March 6th and 7th. Uh, I'm very excited to be again asked to uh, uh, host um, the the panel this year on up and coming platforms, and uh, I have three of our clients on that panel, so it's very very exciting to do that. So thank you to the to the folks at LendIt, and our CEO David Johnson will be hosting and moderating, uh, or actually he'll be sitting on the securitization panel as well. Next slide, please. Thank you to our clients for helping First Associates grow. Um, you know, there's continue to grow every year, and we will continue again this year, and so thank you to the platforms and to the investment banking folks in, in the uh, marketplace lending space. And next slide, please. 
And so it's my pleasure to present Phil Barto. Uh, Phil is the portfolio manager of River North Capital Management. Uh, River North is a, a really exciting company heading into the space as they created a SEC 40 Act fund that Phil's going to chat about a little bit. Um, something new that's uh, coming into the space. There's some others that have followed. Um, and uh, Phil, why don't you just take it away? Thanks a lot, Larry. Thanks again for the opportunity to um, be introduced in, in, in one of these webinars. I, I follow them closely myself, so it's a, uh, always a pleasure to, to get included in these. So um, as you said, um, I oversee marketplace lending assets for River North. Um, if we flip to the next slide, please, we'll get a little bit more detail on River North. So as a firm, we manage about uh, $3.5 billion. We have a variety of different um, structures. So we have some open-ended mutual funds, some closed-end mutual funds, um, one interval fund, which is uh, our River North Marketplace Lending Fund, and then some private partnerships as well. One of those is also buying loans um, for marketplace lending collateral. So I think as a firm, um, we are always attracted to unique, niche markets. Um, we've, we tend to manage a lot of assets in closed-end funds as well as BDCs. And marketplace lending certainly is um, a market that we think is very interesting. There's a lot of growth there, and it's, uh, I think you can certainly make a, a, an argument that it's uh, a niche market that has some attractive pricing to it. So we, we've, um, we put a lot of time and effort, as Larry said, into launching a 40-act fund uh, dedicated to the asset, and we launched that in September of last year, so we're really excited about that. And we continue to, to see a lot of um, a lot of attention there, and uh, that's that's really what we're focused on. So, if we could jump to the next slide, please. I wanted uh, my comments today to just uh, to just be sort of a, a, a informal run through of of some of the the trends and themes that I'm expecting in 2017. Larry and I had this conversation at a conference in November, and he said, you know, we were always interested in hearing what people expect for 2017, so I wanted to highlight um, six trends that I see in the market or I expect to see more in 2017. We kind of have them laid out here quickly, but we will go forward to the next slide and just go over them uh, bullet by bullet uh, pretty quickly here in 10 minutes and then move over to questions. So I do expect continued consolidation on the originator side. I think this is certainly a prediction or a trend that people have been expecting. Uh, definitely throughout the majority of 2016, it seemed to be the lead off on, on most, most uh, presentations at Lendit 2016 in San Francisco. So I don't think, um, I don't think I'm an outlier here in making um, this prediction or my expectation that we will continue to see some Consolidation in the space, I think most of that is driven by right-sizing the market around different loan segments or different loan channels. As we know, you know, in consumer, just to use as an example, there are a bunch of different consumer originators, but I think there are different originators that offer different value propositions at different parts of that, whether it be credit quality spectrum or geographic spectrum or otherwise. So I do think the market is finding its footing around – um, how many originators we need targeting kind of the same borrowers and who's really doing that best. So um, I, I do expect that you will see more of that going forward. Uh, next slide, please. This also follows on the, on the first point, so not probably too much of a, of a leap, leap here from a logical perspective. Um, I, I think that originators are really turning their focus on profitability. If we're looking backwards and thinking about some of the trends we saw in 2015, we saw a lot of energy and a lot of um, excitement around marketplace lending. As a function of that, I think we saw a lot of growth in originators, and I think maybe not necessarily all those originators were able to originate profitably. We kind of fast forward to where we are today and thinking about some of the um, events of 2016, it's really important for platforms to make good loans but also make those good loans in a way that, that makes economic sense. I think that really um, allows them to 
to really see a, a sustainable future if they really can generate cash and be profitable as they go. So I think um, we've already seen this as, as platforms um, right-size their businesses and think about um, – think about their model, so to speak, and whether they distribute loans or hold loans on their balance sheet. I think they're really focusing on making sure that their originations are profitable for them, and, and we like that. We think that's a, we think that's a, a trend that, w that we'd like to see more of. Next slide, please. Uh, third, we have a focus on financial over technology. So that's a, that's a sort of a of a, of a shorthand way of saying I think 2016 events really highlighted the fact that funding mixes of the funding mix of platform selects is really really an important um, part of their business and when markets are um, healthy and there's a lot of demand for product I think there's a little bit less focus on being diversified and having some having some diversification as well as um, a funding mix that will allow you some contingencies, whether that be warehouse facilities that you can fall back on if um, loan buyers pull back or other other ways to finance your business. But I, I think when we talk about fintech, there's a lot of buzz and there's a lot of headlines and there and it certainly garners a lot of attention in the press. But as I look at at this at the space today, I hear more focus on the financial over the technology, I, I think people are more focused on saying, "Hey, you have great, you have a great origination model, but how are you funding yourself, and what are your contingencies in place, such that the market changes hands, uh, changes, um, you know, the mood or the sentiment changes. How do you, how do you manage that change over time? So I, I think that some of the lessons that marketplace lenders are focusing on, I think there's a little bit of irony here. They, they actually are probably looking back at more traditional specialty finance companies. So you have technologically enabled lenders kind of looking back at how um, lenders in 10 years ago, 20 years ago, in some cases 25 years ago used to uh, fund their business. I think they're going to take some interesting lessons away from that. So uh, that is another, another trend that I expect to see in 2017 is you'll really see a, a heightened focus on funding mix. Next slide, please. Um, this also, this also is sort of a buttresses the previous point. Um, this is the growth in programmatic securitizations. I, I think that um, securitization and marketplace lending have made for um, I, you know interesting partners thus far. I think the way that securitization really came about for this collateral is you had investment managers buying um, collateral, holding it for some period of time, and then essentially bringing that collateral to market, doing either a private or a public securitization, which would provide term financing essentially to that investment manager. The investment manager would typically retain the junior most piece or the residual piece of that deal um, and essentially finance their collateral with, uh, with, seniors, with senior bonds. I think that you will see more of this. I think it's a very logical outcome for, again, platforms that want to diversify their capital mix. It's great to have some private fund buyers, whether they be hedge funds or private equity structures. I think 40 Act funds are also an important part of that. I think bank and insurance companies can potentially be really helpful in diversifying that capital mix for platforms, but I also think securitizations are also um, an important part of that. So as we think about where we have been, where we are, where we're going, I think that you will see more what I used here, branded securitization, so you'll see um, originators have a programmatic approach, whether it be quarterly or semi-annually or annually, a securitization with their name on it, right? Instead of an investment manager acting as financial sponsor bringing that deal, I think what you'll see is marketplace lending originators working directly with investment banks to have um, a securitization program with that originator's name on it. We like that. We think that makes sense. Um, we, we like that from an incentive perspective. I want to see originators put their name on their securitizations because if loans don't perform um, in line with their expectations, um, I, I think that that, that, is, that is sort of laid bare, and I think that's important for originators to be behind their collateral. So um, we, we expect to see more of that. One other bullet point I hear was just risk retention. Risk retention in, in the asset back 
securities business is something that has um, been mandated through changes in the regulatory environment. It's something that has already been adopted in non-agency mortgages and uh, is well on its way in structured credit markets, specifically CLOs. I think you are going to see more of it um, come along to existing ABS markets absent a, a change um, in the legislation, which uh, could certainly occur based upon uh, the new administration, but it's just something that's still not really clear to me how risk retention is going to work for marketplace lending uh, originators as they come to do these programmatic um, securitization. So that's something that we will kind of continue to look at and monitor. Um, and the last point I put on here was just a more liquid ABS market. I think it's good for uh, the overall market. You can get a sense of where collateral is trading. You can get a sense of market sentiment. So I think if there's um, more deals out there and more collateral, there's more performance reports, I think generally speaking that's, uh, that's good for both sides of the market, both um, originators and, and buyers of loans. Next slide, please. Uh, I think this is an industry-wide um, trend that we're seeing. I, I think there is a big desire on both sides of the market, so originators as well as loan buyers, to have more standardization in, in this industry. One, one, one thing that certainly seems to be um, a, lot, a, a source of a lot of time and energy for both sides of this market is um, data systems, documentation, loan structure, and reporting. So I think the industry is wise to um, work as well as they can together to have a more standardized approach to data, so specifically definitions of data, how you calculate debt to income ratios, are you including this new loan, are you not, little things like that. Um, I, I think if we had a standardized approach for that, I think it would make, uh, make things a bit easier for, uh, for loan buyers as well as, 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 invest, as investment managers when they do their reporting so they have some, um, some standardization and, and some clarity around that. Same idea for loan structure. Uh, there are a few different structures out there. I think over time the market, generally speaking, will probably pick a handful or two or three of those structures as opposed to having many different structures out there today. Uh, next slide, please. And I put this one in, in there last. I think that um, on the investor side of the market, investors will continue to be fairly hawkish in watching their returns and be, I think, quicker than they have been in the past to stop purchases with, from, from the segment if, if those loans are not performing in line with their expectations. So I, I think as marketplace lending continues to grow and continues to mature, I think there'll be a little bit more clarity on the investor side of are what you getting uh, or what you what, what you've bought is that sort of in line with your expectation. Um, and I think that the the high degree of transparency of data in this industry only further. Um, further underscores that point. So I expect that this is something that has, has picked up steam, and I think you'll see more of that. Um, my, second, my second point here was, was sort of thinking about investors and how they think about marketplace lending assets. Let's just focus on whole loans for the moment. How they think about whole loans fitting into, into the relative value landscape. Um, bonds are certainly moving around. You have uh, some significant moves in in interest rates in the last uh, 60 to 90 days. Thinking about that, how that should be reflected in marketplace lending, I think is certainly something that's on the tip of a lot of people's tongues. So I expect that you, you'll see um, more focus on that uh, from the investor side. And then lastly, I included uh, just thinking about the risk-adjusted comparison of whole loans versus warehouse financing versus securitization. So as you kind of think about the industry continuing to mature, you'll have whole loans, you'll have warehouse facilities, which are essentially loans made to originators so that they can make loans, and then securitization is collateral. I think investment managers will kind of really be looking at all three of those instruments as opposed to saying, hey, I'm just a whole loan buyer or, hey, I'm just a securitization buyer. I think you will see investment managers continue to compare and contrast across those three as those three channels continue to evolve uh, in 2017. 
So those were the those were the predictions and um, and kind of thoughts that I had for 2017. Um, if we could jump through to the next slide, please. I think I'll kick it back over to Larry. If uh, if Larry, if you wanna wanna take the lead on the Q and A portion. And thanks, Phil. And that was that was really good information, and I appreciate that you put that together for the group here. Um, we we've received a whole bunch of questions here based upon some of the issues. Um, I'm going to start and ask you a question from my end in regards to consolidation. I mean, we saw four or five small platforms get consolidated or close up in, in 2016, a couple of small business issues. We've had um, on the first associate side some backup servicing uh, trigger going into primary that we're in the middle of today. Um, we've seen another one that, that uh, that triggered that uh, has had issues there. Um, so I would imagine that you folks are doing a lot of diligence in regards to which platforms are you working with. Uh, maybe you could share which ones they are. And I know that you know what you can share is is public information and what you can't share uh, as such. So if you could maybe uh, opine on that first question would be nice. Yeah, uh, we do a lot of diligence on the front end. Um, I think. Coming from the asset back business, um, in my experience, I think I know a few areas in which are potential um, areas of focus. However, this industry is um, evolving and changing, so it's something while we have a, a baseline that which we start with, we are always thinking about what are things that we should be more proactive about and thinking about on the due diligence front. So it's uh, you hit the nail on the head there. It's an important part of this industry and making sure you really understand all the facets of, of your originator, whether it be how they acquire their borrowers, they're on their marketing side, their systems, their operations, their servicing, their data. Um, it really is, a, it really is a, a big process to undertake and one that I couldn't underscore the, the importance anymore. So I think you hit the nail on the head there. In terms of who we buy from, um, I will list who we have in our prospectus, which is our, our consumer originators, uh, which is Lending Club Prime, Prosper Prime, and SoFi Personal Loans. So that's listed in our prospectus, and then we'll have some uh, quarterly filings that will come out shortly in a couple weeks that will highlight a couple of the other platforms that we buy from specifically on the small business side. So um, we, have, we have typically, right now we have five platforms. I think we'll look to maybe add one or two in 2017, maybe maybe two or three in 2017, but um, as we kind of uh, as we kind of already highlighted, it's a lot of work to add these platforms, to build out the systems, to understand their data. So it's not something we uh, we wander into without a lot of consideration. Great, thanks for that. Um, we had a question come in um, uh, from from our friend John Farber from Citibank here in regards to the structure. And so will River North be participating in securitizations, or is your fund structured differently? Uh, we can participate by prospectus. We can participate in the whole loans, warehouse facilities, and securitization. So um, I think we wrote that in, in June of 2015 when we filed. So I think we had a we had some foresight there about those channels emerging and growing. So we have the ability to do that at the moment. We are more focused on whole loans. I expect that um, as we continue to grow the fund, we will look um, a little bit more at securitization and, and warehouse facilities. Okay. And, and to expand on securitizations, another question came in on what your thoughts are, and I know you touched on this here, but what your thoughts are on platforms taking reps and warrants on the securitization. Some have done so and some have not. Yeah, look, I think that, um, you know, thinking back to what we were just talking about a few minutes ago about standardization, securitization as, a, as an industry, as a tool, not related to marketplace lending, but for pretty much all collateral, um, in order for it to work, in order for the bonds to be able to trade effectively on a secondary market, you really need to have as close to standard terms. So when you're looking at a non-agency mortgage or a CLO, you need the documentation around the, the deal to be as standard as possible so you can really focus on the collateral, and that's where you can, um, you can express your views um, on, the, on the credit of the underlying asset. So I think in order for securitization to work in, in, in meaning continue to grow and to have those deals 
be somewhat programmatic. I think you do have to have a pretty standard package around reps and warrants. I think if you have one originator making them and others not, I think it's going to just create an environment where in the secondary trading market for the bonds, it's just going to end up in a very illiquid situation. Great. Thank you for that. Um, we just received another question from our friends at, at Celtic Bank, who actually are one of the origination charter banks and do a fine job at that as well. Um, you know, can a platform succeed in today's market, uh, or basically it should say, how much seasoning in the assets do you, do you want to see from a platform and their success before purchasing loans? Uh, that's a, it's a great question. I think we'd like to see at least um, a year of seasoning across loans and at least um, a good amount, and it depends, the amount is sort of dependent on what that average loan ticket size is, but we want to see a data set that we feel is a, a good enough representation of the book um, over the future or over the period that's, that we would be buying in order to make that representation to our, uh, from an underwriting perspective. So um, don't have an exact answer there other than, you know, on the seasoning side, want to see at least a year, and on the size on the size side, it's, a, it's more a function of kind of what that loan segment looks like. Okay, thank you for that. Um, there, the questions are coming in. I'm, I'm going to try to take two more and then we'll wrap up and then uh, we'll send you the questions for some, for some comments sure. here. Um, what's uh, a very interesting question is regarding uh, consumer versus small business. Um, you know, what's your take on the small business lending space? Um, I, I think if you take two or three of the top folks out, then you know there's a handful of players, and most of them don't have uh, you know a lot of loans. But you know, w what do you think is the percentage consumer versus small business in the market today? Uh, I think that number is probably somewhere. You know, it's hard to get a hard number because there's a lot of platforms. So we we sort of do an informal polling to get an idea of that. I think that number is somewhere between kind of 20 to 25 to probably 30 percent of the market on the high end agree with you wholeheartedly that that market is uh, harder to get scale I think that the FICO score and credit score component of consumer makes consumer loans at least from an underwriting perspective somewhat um, uniform so you can kind of look at a at a consumer at any state, at any time, and sort of say, okay, I can understand based upon their FICO score where I'm kind of starting off for. That doesn't really exist in small business, so I think the underwriting process is just significantly more granular. So while marketplace lenders, I think, do an excellent job of reducing pain points for borrowers and shortening that, that time that it takes to get that loan, um, in most cases, a human being still needs to make that credit decisioning, um, which just means that it requires a lot more insight, it requires a lot more experience, and it also requires a lot more time. So I, I do think that we are constructive on the small business segment, but it is certainly one when we look at compare and contrast the underwriting, the small business underwriting process is, it's just, it takes a lot more time and effort. Great. And then um, the last question I have, and, and um, th th this has been really, really valuable stuff today. Um, is um, can you expand your point that you know marketplace asset investors will be more interested in uh, investing in warehouse lines? What we're seeing is a lot of newer participants have jumped in that are providing warehouse lines, and some of the guys that have been around and maybe were early adapters are waiting for some of the smoke to clear. Maybe you could expand mm -hmm. on that. Yeah, I think I think that's right. I think you have you've seen investment managers playing kind of all three sides, so to speak. So they are buying whole loans, they're buying, they're doing, they're providing warehouse financing, and they're buying securitization. I think in some cases they look back on, on what has worked for them, and in some cases it's been whole loans that have worked really well, and in other cases it's been the warehouse facilities that have worked best. So I think it makes a lot of sense. It's logical that you look back at the ways you play the asset and you really like your risk-adjusted returns and you think you can underwrite better as a warehouse um, provider. Perhaps um, I agree with your point that the competitive landscape is a little bit tougher, but um, you know, that, that just means you've got to fight for those opportunities. But I, I think that it is, it is something that that, that sentiment has, has 
shifted a little bit over time, meaning I, I think that was that was a very popular way to play the asset, and then it really kind of shifted to whole loans. And I think for certain investment managers, they realize that they're best at doing the warehouse financing, so they're kind of going to just stick with that. So um, I, I do uh, I do think that it's a it's an interesting trend and one that we like you will continue to keep an eye on. And great. And the last question I have is something that I asked. Uh, all of the panelists on a panel that I moderated in December at the Opal event. And so your predictions for 2017 in one word, volumes up, down, or the same? Uh, I would say volumes up. Great. And with that, um, I did get a couple questions if uh, Phil would be willing to come back maybe mid-year to do a, a kind of update. I think this was really good today. We appreciate um, your, your insight on all of these different areas here. Um, we thank all of the folks that uh, stayed on and um, uh, dialed in today. And again, please, um, you will be receiving a quick Q&A. If you can take a minute or two and fill it out, that helps us develop more content as we continue on through our webinar series. Have a great day. Happy New Year to all of our clients and friends and all of the folks that have taken their time to dial in today. Uh, again, Larry Shavaro, First Associates. We look forward to seeing all of you folks at the upcoming events. Have a great day. Thank you. Please stand by.